Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lady here. Um, I would save some adjectives, but I would say she's a guru in the sports world. She's a stunt supporter of um, soccer slash football. And I'm learning here in the preamp that um, she had a history in the sport from since the country where she came from. Without further ado, I would like her to introduce herself and give her a background and from where, where, where she came. I am Jackie Davis, for those who know me here. For those who know me from Trinidad, I am Jackie Jones. I had my schooling, my primary schooling in Toko, where my father was a school principal. And then I went to St. Crispin's, from which I won a college exhibition to Bishop Ansley High School. At Bishop Ansley High School, I continued my athletic ability. I did the 100 and 200. I did long jump and high jump. I played netball and rounders. When I left school and started teaching, I got into coaching my elementary school netball team. And I did that for the duration of my time in Trinidad, which was about five years after I started teaching. Can I ask, they, can I ask the name of the elementary school? It was St. Crispin's, my old alma mater. And we played netball in the Lystra Lovis League. We started off at St. Anne's and then we went to the Lystra Lovis netball court on the close to the Princess Buildings. When I left Trinidad, I came to Canada to join our sister who was already here and with my husband to do some furthering of education. Could I ask what I, year? Could I ask what year that was? I came to Canada in June of 1969. And I think it was in 1970, some Caribbean netballers who had played netball in the Caribbean and found that there was nothing here in Toronto decided to start an Ontario Netball Association. At the time we started, it was basically islands. We had Jamaica, Barbados, St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla. We had what was called Trinidad, but we weren't really Trinidad because we had a girl from Barbados with us. We had a girl from England with us. So we were kind of, we were the mixed one, <laughs> but it was really an island rivalry. So we started off at Eglinton Park. And from there, we moved to Greenwood. At the time we started, I was involved as a member of Civics Cricket Club. The team was, from, was a member of Civics Cricket Club, mainly because I had a cousin who was very involved in cricket at the time and was part of Civics. So for some years, we were called Civics, even though we weren't sponsored by them. And it, it became a situation to be, and the girls, we had new people coming in who weren't really interested in cricket. And, and through my Sosa, whom I knew, and who was with Ivy, and at the time I was already supporting IUE Sports Club with their soccer. Suggested that probably we become part of the soccer team. So our names, would, we didn't change the name to IUE, but we were affiliated with IUE. Is that still Civic? Under the Civic? No, no we were Legos. Okay, so when did it change from Civic to Lego? Um... I would think, I don't remember the exact year, but it would have been in the late 70s. Okay. But like I say, at that time, I was already supporting Irish soccer 
mainly because I knew some people there and my brother was involved with IUE. That's exactly what I was going to tell the public now. You're making it <laughs> wide, high and wide. But ladies and gentlemen, her brother is Ian Jones, who was interviewed before, a good player, one of the starters for Irie. So she's just being modest by telling you she was supporting her brother in the <laughs> Irie team. All right, go ahead. <laughs> and so we, you know, we remained associated by Irie for years. We ended up calling the club Legals. And I don't know the name just, and I think it might have been Hyacinth Edwards who came up with the name, I am not sure. Because at the time she played netball with us. But we were called Legals and we were still sort of affiliated with I. We, we had um, well, I remember, joint. Yeah, I remember the affiliation. You guys were on Greenwood, right? Yes. I remember the affiliation. We had joint presentations with IUE at the Masonic Temple of Panama. That's um, correct, yes. Globally. That, yeah. So how did you find the, 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 because that was a popularity, that seemed like the thing, right? Um, I don't know if the other teams were affiliated uh, and doing Barbados earlier. Apparently they also had, which is the soccer club, they also had a, a netball team. So is it at that time you think the netballers were starting to affiliate with the soccer teams being nationality? No, when, we, when they started, they were already affiliated. Like Commonwealth was with Commonwealth Cricket Club. Okay. Barbados was with the Barbados soccer team and cricket. So there was already the affiliation when we started. I think the only one that probably didn't have any affiliation was St. Kitts, Nevis, Anguilla. Okay. Okay. So how was that affiliation? And um, so what eventually happened? Because I know there was, was no legals um, eventually fizzled out. And, and how your total branch off, because we have to hear this lady explain Flemington Park. We come in, we're bringing it all the way up because as you understand, this lady is very nudge juggle when it comes to the sport. You know, I, I also, just like we said with the other supporter, when you hear her do the critique uh, objectively, you know she knows the game. So um, how, when you start coming to the games, Ian wasn't playing anymore. He was coaching, but you stayed around Irie. Yeah, what was I stayed, we stayed with Irie until I think the club started petering out. Yeah, because I don't think there's an Irie anymore, is there? No, no, no there is not an Irie anymore. So let's touch on certain things. Um, the Irie tournament. I know you were there, and never missed it. Okay, what you thought about it, what did it mean to you, and what you think it meant to the public and even the visitors? I think the IOE tournament was really a good tournament. I think it brought people together from different backgrounds, from different countries, from different islands. And it was to me a time when you saw people you hadn't seen probably during the year, people coming from the States, you know, so it was, it was a get together, it was more a get together of old friends and being able to cheer on your team and have some food and drink. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you would be missing some people if you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, but you know, the, you, could you have distinguished the difference because ladies and gentlemen, she is a Harry supporter and she is also a player supporter because if I remember correctly, she was player's uh, supporter of the year um, in 1978. So you wasn't getting that easily. So how you distinguish the difference in the teams? Because you know there was a difference. Or do you? 
it, well, there was a difference, yes. And I know at times I vocally spoke about the difference. Well, the public would like to hear. Let me, let me, let, can you even recall? To me, as a coach, you have to be impartial. And I found, and I'm not going to name names, but I found that there were times when players weren't doing what they should or playing the way they should for whatever reason. And the coach would leave them on because they hung out together and remove other players from the team. And so I was very vocal about that. It cost me an enemy to this day, not that I care. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but, but in saying so, for, for the public to, for you to be believable, um, when you, so you support long enough to actually know the ability of the players in your mind that should have been playing and you know the game well enough to know who wasn't playing up to speed either based on the opposition on how well you know they could have played. Is that, yes. is that correct? Yes. Okay, I'll give you an instance. May he rest in peace or stick. He and the coach were good friends. So there were times when I knew Ofstick wasn't playing the way he should and should be sitting on the bench and allowing other players to be out there and won't allow to be out there because of the partiality. For the rivalry in TND first, the Ari thing, so seeing that you sort of have a little gripe based on the picking of the team, what are the teams in TND that you felt was tough? And I mean, um, Jackie, you go back a long way. So that's not a tough one for you, but let's see if you can come up with anybody that, you know. Uh, the only is. team that I found was a rival to IV was West Indies United. Okay. And th that's a big game. <laughs> yes. That, that's, that was a big game. It was a big game. And, and that wasn't an easy game. No. And I think they were Iwi's biggest rivals. Okay. So that's your vocal, that's your vocal game? Or... <laughs> <laughs> you say players was your team, right? Or yes. you had several teams? No, I think it was players. That was the team with the Austins and the yeah. Haywoods and Loney. <laughs> And Loney was like my son. <laughs> I looked at him as if he was my son. Yeah, yeah. So what you thought about the teams actually that players were playing against? It appeared to be more of a fun, but I know that there was really strong rivalry going on there. So even though it looked as though everybody was having a good time and everybody was hanging out with everybody else. There was still that rivalry that we, w we had to win. That's, that's exactly the way it was. That's exactly yes. the way it was. Um, now you know the T&D level and you know the Flemingham level, how you thought, because some of us were playing in both leagues. Yes. And I can tell you as a player, uh, you know, we had to still go to the same level to win in both leagues. So how would you look at the, the uh, position for us to have to go to the same level of, of physical endurance to try to win in both leagues? I think that the guys played at the same level in both leagues. I think they put out the same effort to win they wanted to win, although it was a Sunday morning and everybody was having a good time. There was still that incentive to win. So they played as hard as they could. There was no slacking off on Sunday morning as opposed to probably Wednesday up at Birch Mount. It was the same intensity in the play.
Okay. So um, if you had to first um, tell somebody about the Fleming Dunn League, let's say you're on vacation somewhere, and somebody said they were coming to Toronto, and um, which league would you invite them to first, first to begin? Fleming Dunn. All right. So if, and, and there's a reason for that. Well, it's Sunday morning. It was more relaxing because the other, like the regular league, TND was more in the evening. Okay. And if you have visitors on evenings, you want to do things with them. So the Fleming on Sunday morning, and it was more like a picnic at atmosphere. Um, you know, have you stayed in the sport? What, what, are you still affiliated to any sporting body? No, I came out of netball in 1995, and I took up 10 pin bowling. Oh, boy. Yes. Are you that good? Or you and until, the, and, and, until COVID stopped us, I was still bowling. We went, actually, I don't know if you knew Sonia Dorridge. She played netball with Barbados. She's from Barbados. She played netball with Barbados, and then she played netball with us for a while. She encouraged us. Netball wasn't what it should have been, and we had people coming in. It was very undisciplined, and I can't deal with it. Couldn't deal with it. So Sonia got us, some of us into bowling. And so we started bowling and we won trophies. We've traveled to different states to play, to bowl in championship tournaments. You kidding me? Up to, well, we didn't go anywhere last year because of COVID, but up to 2019, we were in Reno. Ooh, okay, well then that's it. Somebody told me that you didn't want to hear anything, any critique about your brother or whatever. Uh, somebody said you you're, you're weren't easy. Um, I was very protective of my brother. Let, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and when you talked about the football then, because in talking to Tony Scarrett, Ian Jones, Vivian Manswell, and I know you've been within that, watching the game, how you enjoyed that era of, of, of the football? before you came here? It was not only supporting Ian, because I mean, I supported him in QRC. I was a Malvern supporter. Every time I supported my brother outside of QRC, as if Malvern wasn't playing Maple. <laughs> oh yeah, because he played with Maple. He played with Maple. But I was in, I used to be in the Queen's Park, Savannah, just about every day, watching soccer. So you, you, you Barassa, you was around with the Barassa and them, or you were the later version? No, I was there with them. Actually, I was in, in Carlton Franco, was a St. Crispin's boy. And so was Lincoln Phillips. Ooh, talk to me. I was in the era with Kelvin Barassa and Lincoln Phillips, Carlton Franco. Um, Niles and these guys? Niles, Tim Lamkin, those guys that went into the regiment after. And did you know, like you said with the Ivy thing, who wasn't playing properly and who should have been changed from all that time? Because that's the impression I have. Of you. course, because I followed the game. I learned the game thoroughly. So I knew, I just about knew every position and what, who had to do what. That, and as a coach in netball, it, it was the same thing. You had to know every position and coach accordingly. That's the impression I had of you. You know, and that's why I tried, I wanted to put that in there because when I met you, the way you were talking and, and that what you said there without calling names, you were calling out coaches and stuff when you were actually saying vocally. And this is not a Toronto thing because I heard from, from a birdie that you were doing that in Trinidad before you came to Canada. Yes. 
because I studied the game. Yeah, yeah, you knew the game. You knew the game because you were brave enough to talk it. You know, exactly. and, and I don't think many people could have tell you to shut up because they would have get a rebuttal and you might <laughs> ask them a few questions that they mightn't be able to answer about the game. So they used to leave you alone. So ladies and gentlemen, this was one of the knowledgeable vocal supporters. And as you know, it's nice to have ladies and women who know the game almost could coach. You think you could have coach a, a men's team or, or assistant or... or based on your knowledge, just based on your knowledge alone of, of position and who playing well and that, you, you think uh, email advisory? I could have been an advisor, somebody on the sidelines. Who could, are going as serious as this? Who could make the changes you just talked about earlier and you think that could see with somebody and playing well and call down to the bench and say, what's happening to this other person on the bench would warm up? All right. You sure? I'm sure. So do you still watch the game and can you still notice these things at the international yeah. level? I still, I watch soccer on TV all the time. As a matter of fact, before I came up to you, I was looking at Liverpool and Leeds playing. And what do you think about that level and uh, how, how the game, how you enjoy the game now? And I English soccer, I, I mean, I look at it. But I really don't think there is any plan. And most of the teams, they just seem to be, you know, kicking the ball and running. And when you look at the German soccer and the Spanish, you know, it's a different brand of soccer, a different type of soccer. Yeah, yeah. You, okay, you just said it to the public there, so um, and I, I think you will have the majority of people agreeing with you. You know, it's different, but it doesn't necessarily mean that if they play each other in the league, that the, the better brand would win. You know that, right? Right. Yeah, and, and because it's just being able to distinguish the brands, the style. That's of, right. right. Sports is something I wouldn't bet on because on any given day, anybody could beat anybody. You need a gain from the expert, you know, <laughs> you need a gain to... So Jackie, it was um, really, really nice to get you, um, especially somebody who's been around the game. You know, I know you've been in the, the netball, but you've been in the soccer slash football, and I wanted you to do that part of the brass on them and, and even this present time. So who's your team right now and, and who's the best player right now? Who's the team? Who's your team? Really, I don't have any team now. Do you like me then? I just look at soccer. Oh, you, your voice gone for that support. You give up on that. So, okay. So, yes. um, what about who you think is um, the kind of best top three players? Or, or... Well, I would say Messi. Ronaldo and oh again. Okay, go to he used to be a Brazilian guy and I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, Neymar? Neymar. Yeah. Okay. So uh, bingo. Ping 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 draw. <laughs> <laughs> draw. You play favorites there, so not gonna win much, but uh, you win. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. So yeah, Jackie, I just testing you, you think to see if you get rusty or whatever. It's nice, <laughs> it's nice to know you're still in the game. It's nice to know you're still enjoying the game. You know, you just watch netball or anything in the in the you know? I look at netball, they have netball in the islands and I if they if the world tournaments are going on and I could see it on TV, I still take a look at it, but I don't follow, I don't know if they still have netball here in Toronto and I don't, I don't really follow it. Well, I want you to be objective with this one now. This is the, the one for the road. What do you think about the football in the Caribbean, in the Trinidad and Tobago? You, have you stayed updated with it or you just, you have it in the recycle? I actually haven't seen any of the matches. 
Both. I've seen results, but I haven't seen any of the games. What's your impression based on what you're hearing and where they've been and where they are now? And what's your whole impression? Well, it seems as though the football in Trinidad is, has gone way, way down from what it used to be. And I don't know why, because like I said, I really haven't been following it in the last couple of years. So I really don't know. I think the last time I probably saw anything was when they were in the World Cup. Whoa, that's a, that's a while. That's a while. <laughs> you know, at least they've been in the quarterfinal of the Gold Cup in not too long ago. Um, well, and they're playing some tournament, something now, some yeah, yeah, they, something. yeah, they're playing the qualifying in, in Concacaf and stuff. You know, and um, so yeah, I wanted to know if you're staying abreast with that and stuff. So I guess the um, is the bowling what you call the bowling? Bowling, ten pin bowling. Ten because pin. there's five pin and there's ten pin. We do ten pin. Which one is the is the more proficient or it doesn't matter? It's just a different categories. Which one is the more do you, do you have well, a to me ten for me, I I don't think I could do five pin bowling. The balls are, the ball is too small for my hand, I think. But ten pin bowling is the one that's mostly done by everybody. And that's the one where you have all your tournaments and championships and the like. So are you guys really that good? I mean, uh, to me, is that look like a kind of lock of the jaw thing to hit all the pins and all these things? You know, um... Listen, like soccer, you have to have some idea of what you're doing, where you're putting the ball based on what pins you have left and all that. Yeah, I can see the pins left, but the first shot, the first one, you, I know you're the going first, for everything. The first shot, you have to know where you're lining up your ball so it could hit to get a strike. Now, you don't always get the strike, but you have to have, you have to know what, where to put the ball, how to release the ball, how to follow through with the ball. But the bowling, I mean, the bowling is a fun one. Everybody does with bowling, but I didn't know a championship and all that. Uh, oh, yeah, we have traveled to, so like much, I mean, said, we've traveled to a few states in the United States. Like we were going every year for Bali the last 10 years, we were going to. What's the name of your team? Bar Trini. Because we have, oh, we oh, have that. It's Bajans and Trinis. Oh, okay. <laughs> B-A. B-A-R. Trinis. Trini. Okay. Okay. All right. That's official, right? Yes. Okay. That's the name that that's the name under which we go to tournaments. So if I Google that, if something will come up? No, you won't find that. Okay. We bowl in we bowl in leagues, but then there are four of us who travel to championships. Okay. Two Trinidadians and two Bajans. Well, let me ask it's a you, team of four. Are you still in contact with the Lagos people and stuff? Are you guys still in contact? I see a lot of them still, yes. And you guys? Well, prior to COVID, we would meet every summer. I don't know if you remember Christine. Yes. We would meet every summer at Christine. Well, not everybody, but those who could make it. She always mm. had a, a barbecue and all who could make it would be there. Yeah, yeah, you guys are supposed to have something, man. That's good. That's good that we have that. So, uh, Jackie, I want to thank you for giving me the time, the information. And again, second lady on the circuit, and we hope to have <laughs> many more. So you look good, and you take care of yourself and stay safe. Thank you. So yes. Stay safe. Thanks, you too. All right, then. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.